Come on, come on, you're good, you stop! Hello, and welcome to another episode of The Hat Historian. In this video, I'll be talking about a hat that is an essential part of workplace safety, but also has become something of a symbol of heavy industry fields like construction, mining, or engineering. The hard hat. The hard hat is an essential and ubiquitous safety item in modern heavy industry. A helmet designed to protect from falling objects and debris, hitting one's head against hard or sharp surfaces, or brushing against electrical wires, it has also become something of a symbol for workers in those fields. So let us see where it originated. The hard hat, much like the concept of official workplace safety, is only about a century old. In the past, workers would just wear whatever clothes they wanted and hats tended to be only to protect from the sun, rain, or maybe dust. The first precursors to the hard hat can be considered the ones worn by dock workers. Being in an environment where striking one's head or having unloaded cargo items falling on you was a common risk, they would sometimes take their soft hats and cover them with a thick layer of tar and set it to dry in the sun. The resulting hard shell would provide some protection from these shocks, though of course it was very primitive compared to modern equivalents. Some scholars have credited the famous author Franz Kafka with developing the first safety hard hat, but while he did indeed work for a time as a workplace safety examiner for an insurance company in his native Bohemia, and made some recommendations based on his findings, there is no real evidence that he invented the hard hat. Its origin is in fact often credited to the E.D. Bullard Company of California, founded in 1898, which made mining equipment. Amongst its products was a stiff hat made of leather, roughly the shape of a baseball cap, that was meant to be an affordable protective item for miners. It was rudimentary, but at least could provide some shielding from scraping or striking one head against the top of mine galleries, and could hold a lamp on the front. However, change came when E. W. Bullard, the son of E. D., came back from World War I. While serving in the U.S. Army, he wore a Brody steel helmet, which he brought back with him, and it gave him an inspiration. He felt that if the helmet could protect soldiers in the field, Something similar should be able to protect workmen at risk of head injuries. He developed and patented in 1919 the hard boiled hat, a hardened canvas, leather, and black paint hat whose innovation was a suspension system inside to help soften any blows. His hat was soon adopted for construction workers in US Navy shipyards. The success of this hat meant that competitors soon popped up with their own versions, some based off of military helmets, some completely new. The company MSA introduced a new type of composite bakelite and fiber hat known as the Skull Guard. More resistant than the leather and canvas models, it also had the advantage of being light and non-electrically conductive, so it could be used by linemen to protect themselves from electric shock. It quickly became popular. The first major project where hard hats were widely worn was the construction of the Hoover Dam in 1931. Originally worn by the high scalers clearing rock for the dam, the six companies incorporated, the consortium managing the construction, was so impressed that they purchased protective helmets for all workers on the project from Bullard, and strongly encouraged their use, though there was at the time no absolute requirement yet. The first project where hard hats were mandatory for all people within the work zone, the first hard hat area as it were, was the construction of the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco in 1933. The chief engineer for the bridge, Joseph Strauss, was very concerned about the safety of his workers on such a massive endeavor, notably the risk of injuries caused by falling rivets, and thus ordered all workers to wear a hard hat. He collaborated with Bullard to redesign the mining hat into something more adapted to construction, giving us the template for the modern hard hat. Many of these hats were made of thin steel which, while it didn't insulate from electricity and conducted heat more, was cheaper and easier to manufacture than the MSA composite helmets, which were reserved for more delicate tasks. With its success proven, the hard hat started to gain popularity in industrial settings. Though many workers, either out of comfort or a misplaced sense of pride, still refuse to wear them. Nonetheless, construction, mining, oil drilling, and many other fields started implementing rules to mandate their wear in sensitive areas. The general shape, either full brim or visored, remained relatively consistent throughout the 40s and 50s, though the materials they were made of evolved. While the composite MSA hats remained the top of the line, for cheaper ones, after the steel of the early 30s came aluminum in the late 30s, which was lighter, though still conductive. Fiberglass models appeared in the 1940s, before the inventions of thermoplastics revolutionized the designs in the 1950s. Easier to mold, hard yet light, and also non-conductive, able to be made in many colors, plastics were very quickly adopted for all safety helmets. 
Linemen were equipped with ones that were supposed to insulate up to 10,000 volts. In the 1960s, polycarbonate started being used, and now most hard hats are made of high-density polyethylene. A hard hat is of course only effective if it is being worn, and while many individual projects or companies had mandates for their employees, no legal obligation existed, and some workers chose to issue their wearing, to their detriment. In the early days, some workers refused to don them, either because they found them uncomfortable, or because they felt like it made them look weak or fearful. It was only in the 1970s with the creation of the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, better known as OSHA, that hard hats became legally required in certain fields, but that was only in the United States. In the UK or France, for example, laws mandating it didn't come into the books until the 1990s, though many already wore them, even though there is more reticence in some European countries. And many developing countries have no formal laws on the subject at all, leaving it, like in the US in the 1930s, up to individual companies or workers. It cannot be denied that they work, however. One study showed that 84% of work-related head injuries in industrial fields were on people who were not wearing their hard hat, and stories abound of workers whose life was saved thanks to their helmet. Obviously, as a safety rather than fashion item, like most other hats I've talked about, talking about the hard hat's potential popularity among wearers is somewhat pointless, as it is mandatory for wear in places you generally see it. And yet beyond its important original purpose as a safety device, the hard hat has also become an important cultural symbol for the blue-collar, heavy industry workers. Having come a long way from considering it a sign of weakness, like early workers did, they now embrace it as a sign of their jobs, and the term is sometimes even used as shorthand slang for construction workers. Their owners will sometimes decorate their hats with stickers that, much like bumper stickers on trucks, can display their beliefs, humor, qualifications, affiliations, etc. Some companies use different colors to denote hierarchy for the wearer, and while these change from company to company, some are fairly widespread, like white for managers or foremen, red for emergency workers, or orange for visitors or laymen, though orange is also widespread with road workers. Some companies will sometimes issue pink helmets to male employees who figure out theirs for the day as a form of punishment. The hard hat is also closely associated with engineering, with new students in engineering schools often receiving one as part of their induction into the school. This cultural affiliation is strongly supported by safety organizations, as it encourages the wearing of the hat, which is a win for everybody. While the shape of the hat has changed little in the last century, that does not mean it hasn't evolved with new technologies. As I discussed earlier, the shell material has been upgraded to become progressively stronger, yet lighter and more comfortable. Importantly, new webbing systems and materials have helped improve the liner's cushioning capabilities. Hard hats now sometimes come with integrated safety goggles, or visors that can be attached, and some have anchor points for earmuffs to protect the wearer's hearing in loud environments. They can have radios, integrated lamps, cameras, all to make them both more practical for the worker wearing it, and to improve safety. New models being developed for workers who work in high places even resemble climbing helmets, with chin straps and protection to the side of the head, in an attempt to improve chances of survival from a fall. With safety a paramount concern for modern heavy industry, the hard hat is an essential part of the workman's equipment. With safety rules only becoming more stringent, it is unlikely to go away anytime soon, though it will evolve in new ways to make it both better at its job and more comfortable but it will most likely remain a beloved symbol for a whole category of workers who see wearing it as a visible sign of pride in their jobs and solidarity with each other. So I hope once again that you found this video interesting and will join me again soon for another hat. Until then, I tip my hat to you. <laughs>